question that many people are asking themselves. Could an EMP attack be a part of the end times? An EMP attack. Now, uh, we have to understand without del delving too deeply into the actual science, uh, electromagnetic pulse or EMP attack would essentially fry elect electric circuits and knock out electricity in the affected area. And uh, depending on how wide and for how long an area loses electricity, uh, the effects of an EMP attack could be devastating. So much of the world relies upon electricity. We have to understand this. And uh, communications, banking, tele, uh, transportation would be severely uh, impacted. But uh, the Bible, does the Bible uh, say specifically that there will be an EMP attack in the end times? Now, let's see. Questions concerning an EMP attack in the end times are very similar to questions concerning a nuclear attack. A nuclear attack. And uh, that, of course, in the, in, in the end times. But uh, does the biblical end times prophecy allow for it? Probably yes. <laughs> it's probably yes. But uh, does biblical end times prophecy explicitly predict that it will happen no it doesn't say that it will happen no there's no place in the bible does the bible predict that there will be war in the end times does the bible say there'll be war in the end times yeah did did it say that war in the end times definitely that is possible However, the Bible does not predict any specific modern weapons. It doesn't say which kind of weapons will be used in the end time conflicts. I'm sure people are watching Israel, they're watching Palestine, they're watching different uh, uh, people and they're saying, oh, th this one, this will happen, this, you know, this kind of uh, 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 war kind of, you know, uh, um, what do I say, weapon will be used. The Bible has not predicted which kind of weapon, which kind of thing. But it is said there will be lawlessness and there will be definitely wars and things like that. It, it is said. Now, let's come back to our idea. The idea of uh, an EMP attack is interesting. Although, if a EMP attacks were launched worldwide, you have to understand that uh, it will render all technology useless. And the world will essentially revert to a state of uh, comparable that to about 2,000 years back. Technology will be go back behind because everything will be rendered useless. And this would mean that the biblical references to swords and horses and etc. and all those kind of things in the end times wars could be understood literally. <laughs> you remember the Bible says about wars and uh, those kind of... Uh, see... And he shall judge among the nations, and he shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords. You see, people are wondering, Ay, why is the Bible talking about swords and horses and things like that? But if an EMP happened, we would see this uh, now, literally people using swords into plowshare and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So, if it happens, then we'll go back to those... Uh, 2000 years how it how it was back in the days and we'll be using those swords and things like that and uh, i'm sure the bible has spoken about so 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 many so many times concerning uh, those kind of weapons which were used back in the days and and sometimes you read them and you ask yourself why is the bible talking about this kind of weird uh, weird kind of weapons why is it not talking about uh, bombs and <laughs> and you shall come to thy place out of the north parts Thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses. Right now, do we ride horses going to war? Mm, not really. Maybe just for, uh, just for showing off a great company and a mighty army. So that time, it will basically be going back to horses. And also in Revelation, we have seen the same also being spoken here. In Revelation uh, 14.20, it says... 
and the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse uh, uh, bridles, by the space of a thousand six hundred and uh, six hundred furlongs. So when you hear about the winepress, it used to be something which was a. Uh, uh, I, I, I not prepared that uh, slide, but it was something which uh, was uh, ridden by horses to press the wine press. You know, all, all those kind of things. So I'm, I'm just giving you a picture here so that you can understand what would happen if an, uh, an EMP would uh, be stricken. But uh, all this is just speculation. It's all speculation. Don't take me wrong about this. And uh, most interpreters of the Bible prophecy, they... They, they, they kind of believe the word of God is simply describing the end times wars figuratively using terminology familiar to the people who lived at the time uh, those prophecies were written. I'm sure there are people who try to read the prophecies and they, 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 they try to say, oh, this one is speaking about this and this is speaking about this and there'll be this, this kind of thing. Like, for example, when we hear the Gog and Magog war and uh, we hear about uh, uh, that... Uh, for example, we hear that uh, Syria will be a heap of ruins, Damascus. And you say, oh, in one night, what would make Syria a heap of ruins? Probably an, a, a bomb, some, some, I don't know, things like that. But of course, the Bible doesn't say all those kind of things. So anyway, enough said. <laughs> Let's ask ourselves this question once again. So could an EMP attack be a part of the end times? Definitely, definitely, because... The Bible, remember what it says in the book of Daniel, that knowledge will increase. Knowledge will increase. So if there's more knowledge, what does it mean? They will create some kind of things which will uh, 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 be, be, be so bad and they'll devastate in the last times. Okay? So does the Bible explicitly predict that uh, an EMP uh, uh, will return the world to the dark ages? Does it say that during the end times? No, it doesn't say that. So... Wherever it goes, uh, let the will of God be done. I don't know. I don't know. We're just speculating and just saying, let's keep on watching. Let's see what the Bible says. And if you're out there and you're still scared and you're saying, oh, I don't know. These people are going to finish us and they're going to do all these things and I have no hope. Let me give you some hope. The hope is in the gospel. Gospel. If you believe the gospel, my friends, you are, you are saved and you, and you don't have to worry about what is going to happen to the earth in the end times. Please believe the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's the good news about what Jesus did for us and how he did it. Now, what did Jesus did do for us? The Bible says that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And how did he do it? He died by shedding his blood. You may ask, why blood? Because uh, if Jesus could have uh, died by electrocution, uh, 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 drowning in water, being strangled, could there be no salvation? I don't think so. Why? Because the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. There had to be shedding of blood. So, uh, why is the blood important anyway? Why is the blood so important? Leviticus 17, 11 says that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given you the blood upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that atones for the soul. It's the blood which atones for the soul. So if we use blood to atone for the soul, what kind of blood can it be? Can your blood or my blood atone for anything? No. Your blood or my blood is filthy because we are sinners and the wages of sin is death. For us, our blood is, cannot help us. But the Bible says there was one man 2,000 years ago, Christ, who died for us. Christ died for our sins. While we are still sinners, Christ died for our sins. Okay. So, uh, let's believe the gospel. Let's be able to understand. After you understand that gospel, after you understand what Jesus did for you, all you need to do is just tell him what you have believed. Just confess it to him. Tell him that, Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins. You are buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's all you need to do, my friends. And you only confess what you know. You don't confess what you don't know. I hope this has been a blessing to you. I hope you have been able to hear. I, I hope I have not scared you about what is coming. 
but if you enjoy this video please give it a like and also you can uh, share the video so that other people can also be able to hear and understand some couple of things and uh, also please kindly subscribe to watch more videos which we post every day and uh, hit the notification bell not to miss any and uh, in the description we have a couple of other channels please go there and check them out and also share to your friends thank you god bless you and have a blessed time